So hey guys, I haven't done a video in a minute, but uh, I decided that I was going to go ahead and do one about what I've been reading because I haven't talked about that stuff in a minute. Um, I'm also going to do one uh, later on uh, during my poll for this week, uh, but I was sitting here waiting to go to the comic shop and I was like, well, I guess I'll make a video about things I've been reading. So uh, I'm not sure when exactly this stuff came out. Most of it's come out in the last two weeks since I haven't been doing videos, but uh, yeah, uh, some good stuff. Um read uh, Cluster number four, which I've really, really been enjoying Cluster. Um, this issue didn't exactly work out the way that I thought it was going to work out, or that the series was going to work out, but, uh, you know, it was really good. It had a big surprising ending to me, uh, the way that it worked out, because I really thought that somebody was dead that wasn't, and people died who I didn't think were going to die. Um, I don't believe that this is a limited series. It may be a limited series, uh, but um, yeah, it has really, really been good. And uh, yeah, Cluster. Uh, then I read uh, the new uh, Roche Limit book, which is set in the future, and um, you've got like this uh, Merc team that is going to this planet to uh, deal with the mines that had the uh, trillium or whatever it was called um, in it and uh, yeah their ship gets shot down and there's this message telling them that um, you know go away kill yourself and uh, you know just uh, get off the planet uh, we tried to stop you but since we couldn't stop you stop yourselves and uh, yeah, it was uh, real mysterious. I really enjoyed the mystery in this a lot more than I think I did in the original Roche Limit. The original Roche Limit, um, just, it didn't to me start out with as big a mystery as was going on. And I'm glad that because I'm reading Southern Cross, that uh, that book is a little different than Southern Cross now because they were kind of a lot alike to me. Uh, Arcadia. Um, really enjoyed Arcadia. Uh, the first time that I read it, uh, I wasn't really sure. There were certain things I liked, certain things I didn't like. The second time I read it, I really enjoyed it. Um, basically, it's about the future, and there's been a plague, and um, you go to this place, and they upload your consciousness into a big computer, uh, kind of like that movie with uh, uh, Johnny Depp that came out, the uh, Divergent or whatever it was. But, uh, yeah upload you into this big server while they're trying to work on the cure like each server has a uh, different special like the main server which is uh, the Arcadia server um, has like all the great minds all the great scientists but the people inside the computer are starting to leverage their abilities towards the outside to get more resources to kind of live in this like heavenly matrix world and, uh, yeah, I thought it was really interesting and, uh, curious to see where it's going to go, uh, where it's going to go from here. The art on it was just phenomenal. Love the art and the coloring a lot on this. And, uh, just a really solid story, I thought. Uh, can't wait to see where it goes. Uh, We Can Never Go Home, number two. This was a lot like We Never Go, we never go Home, number one. Um, I thought it was great, too. Um, love, uh, love the art and the coloring in this. Uh, the story in this, um, these people don't really want to kill people, they just kind of figured out that they have superpowers, and now they're going around, and, um, wherever they go, they wind up killing people, and this issue, they, they, last issue, they decided they had to get out of town, this issue, the guy thought it would be a good idea to go and rob a drug dealer, um, and, uh, yeah, bad things happen, and, uh, culminate with, uh, these like gangster types knocking on the door, uh, talking about room service, you know, getting ready to, getting ready to whack them. But, uh, yeah, that's, uh, really, really been a pretty good series from Black Mask. Um, then I read Apocalypse number six. This book con continues to be confusing, but it's so beautiful. And I feel like eventually I'm going to totally understand the story. I mean, I've got a pretty good grasp on what the story is. But that eventually I'm really going to understand all of the different things that are working against each other. There are a lot of pieces that are working against each other in this book. And uh, 
you know, all that's for certain is that there's the past, the present, and the future are all in this one place, and they're all at war, and there's different factions, some of which have people from the future and people from the past, some of which are just all past, some of which are just all future, some of which are people that are from the past but accepting future, uh, future technologies in order to wage war. Some people just wage war with like, you know, horse and buggies. Uh, really interesting. Uh, I really like the way that they keep giving us backstory on these on these people and uh, really have built a really, really good world, even though I don't completely understand what the world is. I do understand the characters that are inside it. Uh, next up, uh, Red Nailbiter. This book just keeps getting better. I mean, it is just, it's been snowballing the last three or four issues. Uh, I really enjoyed the... Um, the back and forth that's been going on um, between the FBI agent uh, Finch and uh, Warren and the sheriff and just all that that's been going on is really about to come to a head here and we're getting a little bit of a little bit of background about the past killers uh, and then in this issue we get introduced to these uh, religious fanatic people that are going to I guess go out and start killing serial killers uh, but yeah, um, another just uh, really good issue. Like I say, the last three or four issues of that book, I really, really, I've enjoyed the whole series. The last three or four have been great. Um, they're not like us. Um, I keep thinking that I want to drop this book, but then I get an issue and I enjoy it. And so I pick up the next issue thinking, well, it, but I swear if this book ever lets me down uh, for a second, um, I'll prob I might drop it. I don't know. I mean, it's only a it's only a two ninety nine book, so it's very two ninety nine enjoyable. Uh, the art and the coloring, especially by Jordi Belair, is uh, freaking amazing, and it's just not like anything else. I mean, you know, it's like a just an Xavier School for Mutants type of thing, but with just the most seriously dysfunctional, messed up people led by uh, the voice who is just, I'm not sure exactly what his purpose is, but I'm pretty sure that he's, well, this explains a little bit more about what his purpose is, but um, pretty sure he's just out to, to wreak havoc and get revenge. And so, and he's got an army of mutants behind him. Um, Outcast, uh, I can't ever tell what what number Outcast is. I think this is number eight. Um, yeah, they're try, still trying to get to the bottom of who's behind what's going on with um, you know everything. Um, this book, this issue looked a little different to me. I think I said it on my pull list that it looked a little different to me. I mean, it's just the art and everything and the coloring on this were just stunning to me. Um, you know, a lot. Uh, a lot bolder, uh, a lot bold full colors like that, and uh, yeah, this issue was really good, um, but I feel like this book at some point is going to have to give me, uh, at some point the Reverend's going to have to die, and uh, really just uh, send the main character guy off the edge. Um, spread, uh, this issue was... Uh, Mainly backstory on Preacher and how he got to be who he is and why he is the way he is and gave us a little bit more understanding of the spread. I like that in the second arc of this that there seems to be um, a lot more spread going on. What's going on with the spread? Like the first was just all about Noah and the baby and um, all of that. I really like that in this uh, second set of issues that they're giving us a little more uh, backstory on the spread and where it came from and kind of what I guess what it wants but not really uh, and then uh, read uh, Gem and the Holograms number two um, I'm I'm really enjoying that book uh, two of my favorite characters um, in the Gem series are uh, uh, Kimber and uh, and Stormer and their relationship in the cartoon I really liked because they're both kind of the outsiders to their group. 
and uh, there's uh, an episode called uh, The Band's Breakup uh, of Jim and the Holograms that um, they both feel like they're not wanted, so they just go out and start their own band and um, kind of get taken advantage of and uh, pushed around by everybody, but, um, you know, go out and you know, had their had their own thing, and then the bands realize you know how much they need them and everything. But I really like their their relationship. Um, in this, it was a little more like maybe they were going to be like lesbians or something, which I guess would be okay. But I don't exactly see how that's going to work out. But uh, you know, hey, um, whatever whatever they do, I'm sure will be great. Uh, the art in this continues to be amazing, and. Uh, you know, um, I've gotten both the box sets uh, on this. Uh, I'm really upset that each issue isn't going to have a box set of all the covers. Um, but they did it this way because you had uh, Jim on the first one and uh, then uh, the Misfits and uh, on the second. So, you know. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to get off here. I've taken up way too much time talking about crap and... Uh, I guess uh, I'll run to the shop and grab my books. Uh, talk to you later.